Hey guys, it's Tech Infusion, and today we're going to be taking a look at two of the most popular nonlinear editing softwares available today, Final Cut Pro X and Premiere Pro CC 2017. Now, both are amazing pieces of software, but they also have their cons. Let's find out which one is right for you. Premiere Pro can be purchased for $19.99 a month, which is a bit pricey, especially if you want the entire Adobe suite, which will cost you $50 a month. Taking a look at Final Cut Pro, it's available on the App Store for a one-time purchase of $2.99. But let's not let the price sway our judgment of the actual performance of these applications. So the first main difference between Final Cut Pro and Premiere is media management. Jumping inside of Premiere Pro, we're greeted with a folder system, much like you'd see in Finder or Windows Explorer. This system makes it easy to organize your footage and keep track of everything. Switching over to Final Cut Pro, things are a bit different. You don't have individual files for your projects, everything is contained in a single library. Also, folders don't really exist. However, there are these things called events. They allow you to categorize and tag your footage in specific events. This isn't necessarily better than a folder system, however you can get used to it and eventually you may prefer using events instead of folders. When it comes to creating projects, those are kept in events as well. Personally, I just create events for each of the videos I'm making. So next, let's take a look at the timeline differences. This is a huge factor since the timeline basically determines the way you edit. Both Premiere and Final Cut Pro have something called non-linear timelines. This means that you can drop clips in and take them out in any order that you want. You're not stuck going from the beginning to the end of your project. You can edit at anywhere in the timeline. Premiere's timeline presents you with a clean, blocky design. Each layer has its own settings for disabling, soloing, and locking that specific layer. Each layer has a color and is also numbered to help you keep track of what layer is what. On the top half of your timeline, you have your video tracks, and on the bottom half is where you place your audio. When you drag a clip in, it goes exactly where you drop it. It functions like you'd expect a typical timeline to. Moving to Final Cut Pro, the timeline initially looks similar. However, there aren't any tracks or layers as there were in Premiere Pro. When you start to place clips, you'll begin to see a huge difference. This difference is what Apple calls a magnetic timeline. The magnetic timeline is one of the biggest hurdles to overcome if you're used to editing in a track-based editor. Apple's idea was to build a timeline in which you lay out all of your main clips to establish the baseline of your story, and then add clips on top to support and complete your piece. When dropping in clips on the middle of your timeline, they will by default snap together, which is where the term magnetic comes from. I personally really like editing on the Final Cut Pro timeline, there's just something about it that's just magical. It takes time to get used to unless you're new to editing and haven't had time to make habits. One of the best things about Final Cut Pro is its ability to render in the background. As soon as you stop moving your mouse, it begins to render the spots of your project that need it. However, if you look at Premiere Pro, you'll either see a green, yellow, or red bar across the top of your footage. Green means you're good to go, yellow and red means that segment needs to render. Rendering in Premiere must be started manually, which is a lot more inconvenient than Final Cut Pro, which will start on its own. You can edit a lot quicker if you're not having to constantly render your project just to watch it in real time. When it comes to tools, both Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro share many of the same types of tools. If I had to pick a winner, I'd say I enjoy using the tools in Final Cut Pro the most just because they complement the magnetic timeline well and are super easy to use. If you're looking to do effects and animations, hands down, the winner is Premiere Pro. Don't get me wrong. Final Cut Pro has its share of effects and keyframing, but Premiere has way more options and presents these options in a more user-friendly manner. And that's not even taking After Effects into consideration. Using After Effects with Premiere Pro, you can pretty much create anything you want. As a prosumer of these softwares, I always turn to Premiere when I have any type of custom animations or graphics I need to make. An important category that I have not yet covered is color correction. Color correction can either make or break your project, and while it's possible to efficiently and effectively color correct in both of these softwares, there's definitely a more powerful option out of the two. First, let's look at the Final Cut Pro built-in color correction. Here we're greeted with three tabs, color, saturation, and exposure. 
With enough tweaking, eventually you can get your shot close to how you want it to look. However, I find that it just doesn't provide enough customization, and I often opt for a third-party plugin. But things change in Premiere. With the built-in Lumetri color effects, there's so much tweaking you can do to a clip that I can't think of any features that I would need a secondary plugin for. All of these options are much more user-friendly, and you don't have to be a color correcting pro to use them. I definitely have to hand Premiere Pro the award for color correcting. In my opinion, it's one of the best color correcting tools out there. As you finish your project and it comes time to render your amazing creation to share with the world, you may start to question which software will render quicker. Render speeds in Final Cut Pro are almost unbelievable when compared to Premiere Pro. Apple has optimized their computers to work with Final Cut so well that there's just no comparison. Final Cut renders in nearly half the time it takes for Premiere to render, and this is important to some people because they don't have time to sit around and wait for a render to complete. Final Cut Pro is also significantly better and faster at editing 4K footage. So let's back up and look at the benefits of each software. Premiere Pro, while a bit expensive, is such a powerful piece of software that enables you to create Hollywood quality projects. This is mainly because of the effects, graphics, and amazing color correction capabilities. However, Final Cut Pro can achieve close to the same results with enough effort and third-party plugins. Where Final Cut Pro really pulls ahead is when you're in a crunch for time or you just simply don't want to experience laggy editing of 4K or wait around for long renders. If you have the patience to learn the magnetic timeline, it's insane how fast you can edit with it. One of the biggest cons to Final Cut Pro is that all of you Windows users out there are out of luck because it only runs on Mac OS. So anyways guys, that's pretty much all for this video. I'm sure I missed a few differences between these two softwares. However, I'm confident I gave you a good overview that might just help you make your decision of which software to purchase. I'd advise you to download the free trials, which will be linked in the description below and find out which one is right for you. Anyways guys, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please remember to leave a like and don't forget to comment and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And until next time, guys, peace out.